morning. Let's get adjusted here. I'm in a spot that I've not brought you to before. To be honest with you, I haven't actually fished this spot in probably six or seven years. Um, funny enough, actually, the, the last time I fished this spot was one of the first sessions I ever did uh, with my buddy Jesse when we first got into the European style carp fishing, when we first discovered European carp tackle. Um, knowing that this was such a prolific carp spot for me when I was younger, uh, you know, back in my, my teenage years, I used to ride my bike out here. Um, uh, we thought we'd start out here uh, when we first got the, you know, our very first carp rods and the carp nets and the mats and the bite alarms and such. Funny enough, the first three sessions we did here blanked and we thought we were doing something wrong. Uh, turns out we were just really early in the season. We did manage to get our first carp on the new carp gear uh, when we were trying it out. Um, but it was just a little bit further up the road, same water. Um, but about five minutes up the road, uh, a little bit more of a, a wooded area uh, onto the water instead of such a busy road like right behind me. You know, I got hydro towers over, I got an industrial area just up the road there. So it's kind of like this, this nice little piece of carping paradise on the outskirts of town, but right in the middle of like an industrial area. So yeah, it was, it was a pretty wild experience, you know, learning this new equipment and, uh, and trying an old spot. And then after that, I didn't fish here again. You know, I moved on to the Welland River and stuff like that, where I was getting into more and bigger fish. And it, it just became, became one of those spots that I always wanted to get back to and always had this plan to get back to, especially when we started doing the videos. And I just never did. Um, normally this time of year, this whole bay here would be completely choked with weeds. And there's none, uh, absolutely none. I, I'm not actually in the swim I wanted to be. This is the only open space in the reeds on this whole bank. Um, right under that, that hydro tower you see right there, there's a, a nice little grassy knoll there. It's perfect for sitting, it's comfortable, it's about 100 feet off the road, so it's a little bit quieter. It's just a more comfortable spot overall. There used to be an opening like this over there years ago. Um, I walked in there this morning, luckily no gear, um, just parked the van and it's literally across from where I parked the van, so I just kind of walk across the road and I'm, I'm on the spot. Unfortunately, the reeds have come up so thick that unless I had waders and a machete with me, I, I couldn't even make a narrow opening just to put a rod through. Um, and obviously I need a, a space to get a rod through and uh, a net to net any fish I might catch. So I've had to, oh my God, I've had to come over here uh, right off the side of the road, like literally another arm length that I'm hitting the, the barrier to the concrete uh, where the cars are flying past me. It's a very steep, rocky slope. Um, I actually used to fish the spot for bass, uh, just running a, a buzz bait or a spinner bait along the, the reed lines here usually gets you one or two bass and then you drive up the road to the next spot and get a couple more because this is, this is the only open spot and I was determined to fish here today. Um, I've set up here anyways. Got my mobile approach, got the tripod with the alarm on it, and uh, just minimal gear with me. And I've seen a few fish rise. Um, just barely breaking the surface, like there's one out there now. But for the first 40 minutes before the sun came up, couldn't see anything. Flat calm, with the exception of a bass that took a frog right in front of me, which was pretty awesome to watch. But there's just not been many signs of, of carp at all. But I'm pretty confident now I'm seeing bubbles quite heavily over to the right in a few different spots. Uh, I've seen little rises, lots of bait fish rising and other fish. There's, there's lots of different species in here. Um, but there's activity over the bait. I'm using really fine particles, so that's going to attract in a lot of bait fish, some panfish, some catfish. It's going to attract a lot of stuff in there. And hopefully the carp will follow and, and move over. Now, of course, once I put all the bait in here this morning, I thought, you know what, it, it's, it's good. You know, it's flat, calm, 
I drove by yesterday, the wind was howling into this end, so I thought if the wind held, I would be getting into fish right away. But the wind didn't hold. And it's actually set to come in from the north later on this morning, which is actually from this way, so it'll still be blowing into this corner. We'll see what happens. Once I got the bait in and I was set up, I actually heard two, I don't know how big they were, but they were definitively carp. Um, jumping over across the road on the other side. I just saw a weasel pop up and go down. He must be checking me out. But I don't, I don't like fishing the other side over there. It's, uh, it's really shallow and it's just silt. Um, great for catfish. You know, you throw a worm on and, and dunk that out there and you'll get catfish all day long. But I don't want to fish in that muck over there. Uh, it is kind of silty here, but there's a lot of gravel spots on this side. And it's not hard to find them. You know, just a kind of a wing it cast out there and you can usually find one pretty quickly. And with no weeds, I'm, I'm even more confident with how my bait's sitting. So, just have to uh, see what happens. I'm assuming that because all this stuff is overgrown that people just don't fish here anymore. It used to be a really, really popular spot, um, you know, for crappies and bass. And never really popular for carp other than a, a small group of us as teenagers and such. Um, but there's life in my swim, there's activity moving around, there's bait fish and, and other things showing over my bait. There's carp starting to rise just out past. I'm gonna have to get a camera on that bubbler over there. It's actually, there's bubbles coming up and a mud cloud that you can see in the muddy water. That's how deep Hardy's digging, so. I'm gonna finish getting my, my gear set up and uh, hopefully it won't take us long to get a bite. I might have to cast around at, at fish signs before they really get on the bait, but we'll see. I've been, I've been rambling too long. Been a little while since I, I got here and got started. It's 20 after 8 this morning. Um, so I'm looking at about, uh, I guess about two and a half hours since the line's gone in. Or maybe just shy of that. And definitely this area is, is full of life. There's stuff going on. Um, there's fish about. Some key things that I've noticed that may dictate my actions for the next hour or so. One key thing that I missed is that I completely forgot that there's a culvert that goes underneath the road uh, connecting these two sections. So when the current shifts, um, there's times when it pushes straight out into the area I'm fishing, but way over to my right. And obviously that would be a key feature to fish to when you've got a current edge um, you know, it's going to move the food around, it's going to move scent around, and fish are going to follow that line right up in. So, looking at the situation now, I definitely should have set up over there, but I didn't. I can reach that from here, but the current's not consistent. It, it could be gone for a few hours, and then all of a sudden uh, come up and run for an hour. So you never really know. So I'm kind of sitting at the ready. I've got a PVA bag um, in my pocket here, ready to go. So that if that current does switch on and starts pushing out, uh, I can quickly throw that on my hook, wing a cast over to the current edge, and hopefully draw a fish in um, if they haven't really started taking at the bait where I, I baited up here. Um, now with that said, I've been casting at showing fish about every 15 minutes or so for the last hour. Um, with absolutely nothing, no knocks, no bumps, no nothing. 
so with that being unproductive I put it back on the the main spot that I baited up this morning or first thing and I've been getting indication there so I'm getting liners there, there's something down there it could be crayfish could be catfish whatever it is there's something on that bait now and, uh, and now I'm getting some signs of that the traffic has definitely picked up there's so much more traffic now so it's a little bit irritating, but it's part and parcel of fishing a spot like this. So yeah, the game plan right now, you know, the, I've been watching the bubblers and the fish movement um, kind of in a line straight across from me. I, I actually tried to continue a little bit of bait towards where the current edge is. So if fish do come in, I might be able to give them a, a branch to kind of follow uh, over to where I'm actually fishing. However, in the last 10 minutes, I've seen two carp rise down this right hand margin. It goes down to about four feet just off these reeds and less than a rod length out, I've seen a fish rise twice. Like I said, in just the last few minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to give it another 10 minutes. If the fish rises there again, I'm gonna put the PVA stick on. I'm gonna put my line over there and hope for the best. If it doesn't happen, then say the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to kind of rethink my strategy, I think, because I know fish are starting to move in on, on my bait. They're moving around closer to me than they were when I... Well, it just rose again, but it rose further down that way. So, looks like it's moving away from me down the bank. I'm just going to have to keep my eyes open, be as observant as I can, see what's happening. But I need to make a change. I need a tactical change within the next 15 minutes, 20 minutes. We'll see. Nine thirty, and uh, I've, I've had to change my rig. I had a bit of a run. Um, might have been a little bit too quick on it. I don't know. I was using a little snowman rig, just a little twelve mil pop up over a fifteen mil boilie, and uh, I'd had a few little pickups. Um, probably would have shown that to you with the action camera but they didn't result in anything. Then I had what seemed like a proper take, and when I brought it in, the boilie was gone. So I changed rigs to a smaller hook, just the pop-up. Um, so it's a very small presentation, really low to the deck. Put it back out there, and I put a few more spoons of bait out. But while I did that, I also dropped a spoonful of bait there under the rod tip and just in the last two or three minutes I look down there's this big plume of clouded water so something's moved in on it and is feeding obviously I don't know what I don't know if it's a carp it could be catfish it could be any number of things but something is in there feeding on that corn so I brought my bait in and I've actually lowered it in just under the rod tip. So I've, only, I've only actually got about six feet of line out from the tip. Just kind of laying along so it, the line lays down a bit. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get another spoon of bait, put it on the same spot, because I think my moving around might have stirred them up, but at least if they know it's there, they might come back. I'm going to try it again. You know, I was hopeful for a quick bite first thing this morning. Um, it didn't happen. I should have known better. Uh, it's been so long since I've fished here. But 
the, the wind has picked up, it is coming out of the north, so it's coming across in front of me, kind of to this bank and, and to the corner where I wanted to be. So at least it should move the scent of the bait around. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get one soon. Yeah, try and get some more bait right there. Finally, we're into a fish. decent fish too. happy right now. I'll show you the rig shortly because right now it's tangled in the net. This fish is much better than I was expecting this morning. I was expecting some smaller fish but this is really thick, really healthy looking, deep body. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish pale in color because the water is murky here it's it's never really clear uh, but it's still it, it's just shimmering in the sunlight it looks amazing really good battle and this was on that really light rig with the 12 mil pop-up fishing right under the rod tip but yeah I'm gonna go over the the whole setup today the rig the bait the rod the reel uh, even my setup with, uh, with the bite alarm on it, because I, I don't think I've really mentioned any of that in, in a video uh, recently. So I'm going to put this fish back, and I'm going to hope for another one, but if not, this thing just made my day. Okay, before I tell you about the rig that I got the fish on, I'm going to tell you what's out there right now. And that's only out there right now because that's what I started with. And the rig I want to show you is in my hand. 
So the rig that's out there now is just a very simple hair rig, not very long. Um, if you've watched any of the videos, you've seen my basic setup uh, as far as the rig goes. However, that rig has a size four universal perfection hook on there and the hook bait is just a little snowman presentation um, a 15 mil coconut boilie from monster carb tackle with a 12 mil mainline pineapple pop-up uh, and that's what i used pretty much all morning uh, had a few bumps and and a, one pickup that was a kind of like a uh, almost like a careless run it didn't really get committed but it ran enough to take a few feet of line before i got to it and you know set into nothing um, and that's out at that spot that's about 25 30 yards out um, that rig is back out there right now and I'm getting pretty steady liners so there's still something out there but I want this close-in spot this margin spot literally if I took if I stood at the edge of the water and took one you know good step out into the water that's where my foot would land where my rig was that's how close I'm fishing right under the rod tip uh, and that's where that fish came from. As I said earlier, I, I baited up that spot and saw it clouded up pretty quickly. And I've just been slowly putting like a half a spoon or two spoons, you know, depending on how long it's been in between, um, just to keep the fish there. And I, I started getting the liner activity. It took about an hour, but, uh, you know, fish are there feeding. It took about an hour to just to get the liner activity. And, uh, and then, yeah, finally, I was literally texting Goldie because he's trying to get the video ready for this week. Um, today's Sunday, the video should have went up at noon yesterday. He's been sick. Uh, I did a rough cut, but he had a lot of work to do to fix the audio and such. So this week's video is actually going up today on the Sunday. And uh, he was just finishing, finishing some of the last touches on it. And we're communicating back and forth about you know certain things we have to add into the description he's working on the cover photo <laughs> so we're we're kind of talking YouTube on the, through texting and the rod just slammed down and and there we go we got that beauty carp but yeah for this margin spot I've just put some bait in there while my fishing out a little further just to hopefully bring something back in Okay, so there's definitely stuff out there, but it's it's not committed yet. Get committed. Massive plane going over too. I don't know if I'll get through this rig talk with uh, with all that liner activity. I'm gonna try. I'm just gonna ignore the bite alarm unless it screams off. How's that? So. I'll probably have a close-up shot that I can superimpose over my yammering here, but this is it. A very, very simple pop-up rig. Uh, you might be able to see the split shot, I don't know. Uh, very short rig, anti-tangle sleeve, little split shot. That's one of the uh, the Raven split shots. Uh, you can get from the Monster Carp Tackle website, I believe. If not, just go to your local tackle shop that carries Raven products for trout fishing. And these are brown split shots. They blend in with the bottom perfectly. Um, you know, a, a, a gray standard colored lead split shot will do the job. But even in this colored water, they do notice little things like that. It, you know, a little shimmer off of it and the fish can be turned off. So getting these brown ones I've found has actually made a huge difference. Um, that's knotless knotted to a size 8 monster carp tackle hook but I've trimmed off what would be the hair and uh, I have a little hook bead and a tiny swivel on there holding my little 12 mil pop up can you see that maybe you can see it maybe you'll see it better in the close-up shot I put up for you um, but that's it. it gives the bait a little bit of movement but I think having a slightly longer hair or even just having that little bit of separation from the hook is why I had those drop runs on the snowman rig earlier so I wanted something that was going to be right tight to the hook and still have a bit of movement I'm sure this rig has a name I think it's similar to the German rig I don't know you can tell me in the comments of how poorly I figured that one out but um, I saw Dave Pendlebury using this rig uh, a number of times and I thought I'd give it a go because 
even though he's not been out as much as we have, his, his hook to catch ratio has been a lot better than mine. Oh, big truck. But yeah, this is, this is what I've had right in the margin spot, right close, like literally there. Um, all I did though is I came over to the right, lowered my rig down, and then just let out line to the left over to where the rod's sitting so that it could sink and lay along the bottom. Um, that's when I started getting the liner activity. When I had my line kind of almost, not quite, but almost bowstring tight to the lead, uh, I wasn't getting any liner activity. They were clearly staying away from it. So laying that line down made a huge difference. And because I'm fishing a relatively shallow spot, um, not just because I'm fishing close, but this whole place is relatively shallow, maybe five, four or five feet overall. And uh, I know there's silt out there. And that, you know, I'm fishing gravelly or clay spots, but I know there's silt out there. I'm only using an ounce and a half lead, a really small square inline lead. And yeah, that's, that's what did the job. So I'm probably gonna leave the snowman rig out there for about 15 minutes or so, because I'm getting liners. I know there's fish out there. Uh, while I get everything else set up with what I'm doing and just kind of get myself put back together after getting that fish and uh, once I see some activity, some clouding up coming from this this margin spot then I'll move, put this little rig back in and I'll move it back onto this spot and hopefully get another one here because that was fun, that was a lot of fun uh, I'll talk about the rod, the reel and the um, vital arm stand set up a little bit later hopefully after another fish uh, but but if not I'll, I'll tell you a little bit later um, I think I need to sit down and have an orange juice or something it's been about two hours since that fish and uh, other than some liners nothing else uh, no other runs traffic is definitely getting busier and uh, wind has picked up a little bit it's, it's definitely a little bit cooler um, some other anglers have come up across the road from me haven't heard of them getting anything I don't think they're fishing for carp I think they're fishing for kind of catfish or whatever will bite um, you know your run-of-the-mill worm dunkers pretty much um, hopefully they catch hopefully they have fun fun time out I have since put my line back on the margin spot right here um, the clouding up isn't like it was earlier but there's definitely still some activity there uh, there's definitely a lot more color to the water than uh, than there is to the areas where I haven't put any bait so uh, I know that something's still visiting there but yeah it's uh, starting to get a little bit rough because nothing's happening so um, I was hoping to you know catch every run I can and get a bunch of fish but not getting the fish and now the action camera batteries are all dead so it's gonna be a if I can get another fish you might not see it till it's on the bank but I had mentioned I wanted to tell you about the whole setup uh, we've already gone over the rigs uh, so I want to mention the rod first of all I haven't used this rod in a while I've had it for for a few years now but I haven't used this one in a while I've been using my three and a half test curves um, or my nine foot my nine foot monster carp rod so this one's kind of been collecting dust in the in the basement for a while but this really is the perfect venue for it um, it's a 12 foot three pound test curve Daiwa phantom rod um, I believe I got this rod from Will a couple years ago when we were doing the 12 months of carp um, when the you know wonderful and ever faithful mad dragon uh, had a grizzly death uh, I was able to get this phantom from Will and that then helped me continue on and finish the 12 months of carp so yeah that's the one I'm using today it's got an awesome battle curve and uh, you know I forgot using the heavier rods that I have been I forgot how much fun it is to have a real good curve in the rod uh, while you're playing a fish and it felt awesome fighting that one earlier so that rod I have coupled with um, a TF Gear DL Black Edition Big Pit Reel. Uh, I think it's like a Dave Lane Signature Series Reel. It's got a quick drag on it. I, I really like it. It's a nice reel. It was one that I had, I had bought because it was on sale and I needed another reel. And uh, 
I've hardly actually used it myself. Goldie's used it um, for the last couple years uh, until he got his own reel. And uh, yeah, he's had no troubles with it. I enjoy it. Forgot that I had it. It was sitting on the shelf next to this, this rod. So I was like, you know what? This morning I'm going to put those two together um, because they're going to make a great couple. And uh, sure enough, yeah, they played that fish perfectly. It's still clouding up there, so something's in there feeding right now. So to talk about the bite indication and, and rod rest setup I have um, using a Monster Carp Tackle Alarm. Like I said before, countless times, it's my favorite day session alarm. You know, I, I don't need my receiver while I'm out sitting next to the rod. I just need a, a basic alarm that's got some good settings if it gets too windy or if I'm fishing current and uh, has some good volume control because I am hard of hearing and sometimes if it's windy having a higher pitched or sorry a lower pitch tone like I like to use I can't hear it even not that far away so um, having the op so many options to go to a higher pitch if it's windy it really helps me out and I can definitely hear it a lot better um, moving down from that I, I should have some clips of these things to overlay as I'm talking. Uh, but moving down from the alarm, I have a little Springer Arm, Signet Springer Arm, with a Signet Dumpy bobbin head. I, I love Signet um, bobbins, uh, you know, of any sort. I have, I don't know, eight or nine of them of different sizes, different colors, um, some with chains, some of the Springer Arms. Just, they're the best uh, bite bobbins out there, I think. You know, I, I love them. Going down from that, I have um, a little attachment between the bite alarm and the, the bank stick. It's, uh, it's got a little knob on the side where I can loosen it off and I can, I can tilt forward or back the head. And, you know, fishing a slope like I am, off of the setup I'm using, I might need to keep the, the rod blank up off the roller wheel of that bite alarm, and that that allows me to do it. You know, if I'm trying to fish like this, the blank's gonna sit right on the roller wheel. Being able to tilt the alarm a little bit makes a world of difference. So I have that on there. I wasn't quite sure. You know, if I was over on the grassy bank that I wanted to be, my rod would have been rested on the, the rest like this, on the bite alarm would have been hitting the blank for sure so I would have needed that tilt feature where I am now having it uh, on a slope going this way I actually have it tilted ever so slightly just slightly it's not straight up and down just slightly back a bit and I, I think that's helping um, going down from there I just have a little little bank stick about that long that uh, is from my very first pod that I ever had because that's what fits into the signet tripod now, I, I love Signet products, and I love this tripod because I can take it anywhere. I can set it up on any, you know, rock, concrete, grass, doesn't matter. I can set it up anywhere pretty much. What I hate, though, is that it didn't come with the upright piece to put your alarm in. You have to buy that separately. That, that's kind of a kick in the arse as far as I'm concerned. should have come with that upright piece because it's the key component. It's the most important part of that tool. Um, but luckily I had one of my own that fit in there instead of having to order a separate piece And uh, yeah, it, it completes that whole setup nicely So now, it, you know, I pop it in a backpack All it takes is a couple seconds just to pop out the legs and I'm, I'm fishing on any kind of uh, surface You know wood concrete like I said rock uh, Which is what I'm on today. I couldn't have put the uh, bank sticks in this And uh, you know, I didn't want to bring the pack pot out or the big signet pot out. I just don't need that here. You know, this is perfect. And if I want to move, I easily can. Just close up the legs, off I go. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole setup. I'm really, really itching to get one more fish before I have to leave this spot. I, I technically have probably another four hours uh, to be fishing here but I had hoped to be out of here by now, uh, having got what I needed to film video here, and then I can go do some exploring and maybe find something 
uh, someplace I can go for the next video. One thing's for sure though, before this season's out, I'm definitely gonna be back to this spot at least one or two more times. Um, I, I do miss fishing here. Don't necessarily like the bank that I'm on because of the noise, but I do miss fishing here. It's a lovely little spot. not what I was after. Well, definitely not what I was after. Um, you know, I kind of want to say a bite is a bite, but I'm not here for catfish. Especially not uh, not catfish that are pooping all over my net and my mat. Gorgeous colors to it. You know, if I was fishing for catfish, great, but I'm not. I need a carp. Damn catfish on a pineapple pop-up. Stop flinging your poop. My God. still working. I hope everything's still working. carp finally hours and hours later plagued by catfish for the last probably hour and a half and this one looks like it's a little bit bigger than the first one but one thing's for certain uh, both these fish today are way better looking and nicer looking fish than I remember being here so I'm gonna get this one on the mat and we'll get a better look at it there we go I want to get this fish back got a little bit of a bloody lip from where the hook was. I'm going to get some carp care on that. Get it back. But what a scrap. I, I, the run was dropped, I thought, for sure. I had lost the fish. Yeah, well, after it quickly took off and then nothing. You know, the line went slack. I checked it, tightened it up, nothing. Let it sit for another five minutes and it just melted off. And that's the result. So pleased with that. So pleased with how this day went in this spot. A little bit slower than I had planned or hoped. I've already stayed longer than I should have. Uh, definitely longer than I had planned. Since the sun's been out and it's gotten hot, uh, the fish activity, you know, no liners, not seeing much. You know, the odd little bump here and there, but no groups of liners like I was getting earlier. Uh, maybe the catfish pushed out. 
but I think for now, I'm about to pack it in and wrap all this up. Uh, maybe give it 15 minutes in case I can sneak another bite out. But I'm happy. First time in this spot in a long time. I uh, managed two carp, catfish. So it wasn't a blank. It wasn't just a single fish to kind of give me a little bit of a fix and you know make me paranoid and wondering all week if I'm gonna catch again next weekend. But as I said earlier, I'm definitely gonna come back to this spot before this, you know, the gets too cold and the season's kind of done for carp before the trout really picks up. Yeah, it was good. Might even bring Goldie here. The last thing you would have seen would have been me uh, wrapping up the video. Um, it's been about half an hour since then. I pretty much just took my time packing everything up. Literally had everything packed up except for the rod and the net. And uh, I had to he dry the net out so it was, you know, not going to go in the car wet. And literally as I picked up the rod to crank it in, uh, it screamed off my hands. And uh, I'm a little bit angry now because, well, it fought like a demon. I got the net in the water. It came close a couple times. I'm not close enough for me to scoop it. Um, it would get close, go back out, went left, went right, back and forth. It was a hell of a battle. And I got a really good look at it. The last draw right up to the net, uh, it was over 20 pounds. It was definitely the biggest carp I've ever seen out of this spot. I've never caught them that big here. Um, you know, the ones that you saw earlier were more the size, you know, kind of maxing out what we would normally get in this spot back in the day. Uh, this one was big way bigger than anything I've caught here before and just as I'm pushing the net to scoop hook come out so I'm gutted didn't really want to end the video on a failure debated whether or not I should even tell you about it but it happened it's part of fishing it's a hell of a good fish it looked it looked immaculate just like the other ones but big you know, big shoulders, that deep body like the others. I'm crushed. I don't care if I have two hours or a whole day next week, it doesn't matter. Regardless of how much time I have, minimal or maximum, I'm, I'm back on this spot next week. I'm definitely back here next week. Now that I've seen that that fish is here, I'm going to put more effort in here for sure.